This is Alive, and it is the fifth Sunday of Ordinary Time. Our gospel passage is Mark chapter 1, 29 through 39. And love this passage. So when I was a student at the Pontifical North American College in Rome, I was a deacon. It was my last year. And I was assigned to be the assistant chaplain for the University of St. Thomas, which happened to be my alma mater. That's where I went to my undergraduate. And the priest chaplain was none other than the now uh, Bishop Andrew Cousins, who's in charge of the National Eucharistic Revival. So I was like his assistant as a deacon. And uh, we had mass normally twice a week. And uh, I would be given the opportunity to preach every now and then. And this gospel passage, the gospel of Mark chapter 1, 29 through 39, was one of the opportunities that I had to preach. I remember just, I was newly, I was newly ordained, I was very nervous, and so I spent so much time praying over this passage, praying over this passage, praying over this passage, and I, the dramatics in this passage, it, it's so powerful. So, you know, Simon Peter, uh, the first pope, uh, his mother-in-law is sick, which, yes, that means that he was married. And it's after sunset. So you have to realize, of course, like there's no electronic lights. So you have to also just like set the scene, right? So it's dark. People have torches. People have lanterns. People have candles. And then it says that they brought to him everyone who was ill or possessed by demons. I just love the scene, right? It's dark. There's candles. There's torches. And then there's a bunch of possessed people, like everyone who's possessed. And then there's people who are ill, right? And so you have people that are sick, people that smell, people that are struggling. And it says the whole town was gathered at the door of Peter's mother-in-law. And then it just says that Jesus stood there and he just cured sickness and diseases and he drove out demons and he didn't permit one of the demons to speak uh, and so the, like, you just see this happening all throughout the night, right? Jesus is casting out sin. He's casting out darkness. He's healing people, right? And you can just see this, the power and the strength of Jesus. But then what's so beautiful is, is that very early before dawn, he left. And he went off to deserted places where he prayed. And that to me is this is a powerful part, right? So here's the battle and the action and the darkness and the light. And then... In the dawn, before anybody else, he goes to a deserted place just to be with his father. And that is our life. For some of you, uh, your battles and your darkness and might be changing diapers and cleaning your house and getting your groceries made and lunches made and checking homework. And for some of you, it might be... Uh, dealing with elderly parents. It might be dealing with a spouse. It might be dealing with some drama at work, some frustrations. And, but we have to be like Jesus in those moments to rise very early before dawn, to go off to a deserted place, and to be with our Father. And it is so important. This is why Having an hour of adoration and adoration chapel, this is why finding a church that's unlocked and going to a place that really is your refuge is so essential. It's just so essential. We, we all need it, every single one of us, myself included. So I want to encourage you that in the midst of the drama, the chaos, the darkness in your life, that you find that place to rise early and to go and to be with your Father and just to allow yourself to be loved uh, and in that to find your identity. God be praised. Have a blessed Sunday. Please note that there are discussion questions down below. Please use those uh, just to foster your prayer life and to help you to become the saint that God is calling you to be. God bless. <laughs>